So glad you're here. This is Jennifer, and today we're doing a split window card design. It sounds complicated, but really it's quite simple and is a fun way to change up a basic card. Now I will start by doing some layer stenciling and share some tips for that. Then I'll show you how to do repeated stamping very easily and also the split window design. We're gonna start with this example here. All of my cards feature the new all to new blooming flower bed stencils. Now this is a great layering set. I love, love, love the look of it. That's why I'm doing it on so many cards today. I do have some ways to step these up and get new looks on each, something that you could do with any stencils you have. I have my waffle flower stencil mat and I'll put my cardstock into the corner of the mat and then I'll put the first stencil into the corner also. Each time I'll line up in the corner and I know my stencils will line up. I'm applying a light amount of green ink over this first stencil. I'll put the colors of each ink that I use on the bottom of the screen. It doesn't matter what type of ink or what type of inking tool you use here. I chose Altenew Crisp Dye Ink because the colors are beautiful and I'm using a variety of Altenew blending brushes. I'll talk about that in a moment. Now I put down that light amount of green ink first and now I'm going into certain areas and applying a darker shade of green ink. So here you can see I'm using a smaller blending brush and putting down a darker green so I can get into certain areas and no need to mask. Then I'm coming in on different leaves and applying a different green ink. So the first one I use is more of a true green. This one's more of like an olive or lime green. And that way each little area of leaves has a different color to it. Now I'm going back to the firefly that I originally put down in a light hand and going heavier with that in the remaining areas. So the reason I did the light green ink first is so that I could just add other color on top and not really have to fill it completely because that green is still underneath it. And now I'm using a detail blending brush to add brown to these dots, which will end up being the center of flowers. All right, so there you can see the variety of color we have. Now I'm doing a few of these panels at once, so I just wipe the stencil off a bit and move on to the next one and repeat the process. I'm not gonna show the stenciling again, but I just do the same thing. All right, so back to the first one. It's time for the second stencil. You can see how easy it lines up. And now I'm applying a variety of colors again. So this time I'm doing different colors in different areas. That's something easy about this particular layering stencil set. If you need to, you can cut mass. But what I do is I just take a scrap of cardstock like you see here, and I just put it over the areas I don't want to ink and just move that around. After I do that blue, I do wipe the stencil off so I don't transfer that blue ink into different areas. And now I'm moving on to another color. You may notice that I'm using a variety of blending brushes. When I have a tiny area, I use a tiny brush. When I have a bigger area, I use a bigger brush. I do a lot of ink blending, so I've bought a lot of brushes over the years, and I'm always trying different ones out, so I have a pretty good collection, but you do not need a billion sizes of brushes and one for absolutely every color under the sun. If you have a brush for like the pinks and reds, a brush for orange and yellows, greens and blues, you should be good to go. I do recommend having a small brush and a large brush. Really doesn't matter what kind or what shape, whatever you feel might work best for you. I will say I do like these all to new brushes a lot, especially the really big size, which I used on the green at the beginning, this detail size, which is tiny, and then the size that's just one up from this. I will link to all of those below, but really use whatever you have. I find that being able to have a small brush is handy because you can get into tiny areas as you see me doing here. This is the third stencil and I'm just applying inks that are darker than the ink I applied underneath it. Now there are these little dots that the stencil does in the background. Instead of doing an ink color over those, I thought I would just trace in those little dots using a glitter pen. So I have a glitter pen here and I'm just filling in the dots that the stencil provides. You could instead do like a glitter paste that gives you sparkle and dimension, but this is just a very fast way to add sparkle to your stenciled backgrounds. You can even do it over ink if you wanted to. Here I'm just doing it directly onto white cardstock. 
Now you could stop there with the inking and little bit of sparkle, but here's another way to step up any stenciled background. I have all this color down and then I just put the stencil back in place and I'm tracing in all of the openings of the stencil. So just running the pen around the edges of the openings of the stencil. And that gives us a sparkle outline on all of our inking. It helps to define the shapes. If you wanted to, you could use a black marker or a colored marker to do this. I'm just putting a little outline sparkle on each of these images. And I'll do this with all three stencils. I'll trace inside all three. Now it's kind of hard to see here. You do see those sparkly little dots, but then if you look closely, especially on those green leaves on the right, you can see the sparkly outline we added. The camera doesn't capture it, but in real life, it does add a lot of sparkle and is worth the time. There you can kind of see some more of that sparkle on the green. It's gorgeous in real life. I just love how it adds true sparkle without changing the color underneath. And the best part is glitter pens aren't that expensive and they last you a long time. All right, let's do another example. Now this one, I did the inking just like before, but changed the colors up a bit. We're gonna step it up by stamping on top of the stenciling. I'm using the Altenew dotted pinwheel background stamp. I do use some of those sentiments on the bottom later in this video, but right now we're just doing the background stamp. Any kind of background stamp that has fine detail like this would work. I'm putting my inked background into my Misty stamping tool on a Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat, which will hold it in place as we stamp. I'm stamping this with a light blue ink and I'll double stamp it just to make it a little bit darker. The key here is to use a stamp that won't be too distracting from the inking you did. I love how that adds a little bit to it, but doesn't really hurt the eyes by having too much, right? You could do a text stamp for this or a stripe that would work well too, but I really like that layered look. Another fun thing you can do is stamp a background stamp with white pigment ink on top of your stenciled background. Let's do one more stenciled background before we move on to the card designs. This one is not complicated, but it's just a reminder that you can stencil on colored paper with inks. Just use a light color of cardstock. So here I'm doing the same kind of inking that I've done all along, but on a light pool cardstock. If you apply enough ink, you will apply enough color that the fact that there's light blue behind it doesn't matter. If you want to use a bold or darker color of cardstock, I do recommend one of two things. The first is to use Distress Oxide inks, which show up more on dark cardstock. Or you can put white pigment ink down first and then color dye ink on top. So those are two other options, but I really like this light color with this traditional dye ink on top. So I have four backgrounds that I've created. One is that blue colored background. One is the one where we stamped on top. One is the one where we traced with the glitter pen and one is just basic inking. That means it's time for our technique for today, which is the split window card design. Now for this first one, I am creating a side folding card. This is an all to new scoreboard, any scoreboard would work. I have a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and I'm scoring it right down the middle at four and a quarter inches. This is how I go about making side folding cards. Now I reinforce that with my bone folder. Then I'm going to cut this in half. This will give me two four and a quarter by five and a half inch side folding cards. And I'm just using one of these for this card. I'll save the other one for later. I'll unfold that and put it back into my scoreboard. We're gonna do one more score line. And for my particular card design, I'm putting that score line at two and three quarter inches. Now you could change this and make it slightly bigger, maybe like three inches if you want to. I'll tell you why I chose two and three quarters in a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna fold that back and this will form the split in our card. And I'll show you how it comes together in a moment. But first we need to create the window. I'm putting a circle die right across that last score line we did. So we want the score line to kind of go down the center of the circle. Doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just eyeballing it. I'll put my tape on it and run that through my die cut machine. And that'll put a circle hole right across that score line we just added. While I have that circle die out, I'll also cut it from white cardstock. 
I'm not gluing any of this down yet, but it's good to have it done. All right, next I thought it'd be fun to stamp the word thanks repeatedly down the left edge of our card. Now you could use any stamp for this, but I chose to use the new Alta New Craft Your Life Magnolia and Blooms kit. Now there's a lot of products that come together here. You've got a six by eight stamp set, a large coordinating die, a large coordinating embossing folder, and coordinating stencils. So there are a million ways you can use these together. I think there are some gorgeous designs here in the idea booklet. I'm just using the sentiment. I had this set sitting out on my desk because I really want to use it. And I saw the thanks and I thought it was a good fit for this card. When I do repeat stamping, I like to use this stamping tool. I put my word right into the stamping tool in the area where I want the repeat stamping. In this case, up against the left hand side of my card. So I have it all the way to the left in my stamping tool. And I'm just making sure it's straight. I then put my card into the stamping tool and I do my first stamping. I'm stamping this with Volcano Lake ink, which is a little bit darker than the color cardstock I'm using. After I stamped it once, I shifted up two grid lines in my stamping tool. So here I've stamped it, now we're gonna shift it up two grid lines. The reason I'm doing two grid lines is this stamp is about a half inch tall. So two grid lines is about a half inch. So that means I get good spacing when I stamp it. If you have a sentiment that's not as tall, you could maybe do one grid line. If you have a sentiment that's taller, maybe three. You just want to experiment with it. But here you can see I'm just shifting it up two grid lines every time. Sometimes I even shift it up so it's hanging out of my stamping tool. Doesn't matter at all. I'm just following the grid lines in the background. I will show more examples of this so you can get an idea of how best to do this. But here I'm just repeat stamping down the border of this card. Now we have to do on the top of the card, so I'm putting it back in the corner of my stamping tool and shifting it down to grid lines. And each time I stamp it a couple times to make the ink a bit darker. I usually choose a lighter ink than I know I want. That way I can stamp it a few times to get it just right. Now that I have my stamped border, I can glue this flap down. So I'm putting glue between the two score lines and then putting something heavy on that while that dries. So this creates kind of a split window. When you open it, that window folds back. Now it's time to add our stenciled piece to the right hand side of that card. So here is one of my backgrounds. It's five and a half inches wide. So I'm cutting it in half. So I have pieces for two cards. So I'm cutting at two and three quarter inches wide, which is what that flap is on the right of our card. Remember that score line was at two and three quarter inches. That's why I picked that measurement. Before we glue this here, I need to cut a semicircle on the top left of this floral piece. Here's the easiest way to do it. Remember that circle that we have left over here with the score line down the center? I'm lining that up on the edge of our floral piece so that the score line down the center lines up with the edge of the floral piece there on the left. I'll hold that in place and then lay the circle die on top. It fits like a puzzle piece. Tape that down and run all of that through my die cut machine. Now I know that the semicircle that I cut on my floral piece will match up with the one on our note card. I then can put adhesive on the front of our card to the right of that score line and then we can place this piece on top. Now my piece is a little bit big for this, but that's okay, I just line up that semicircle. Then I'll flip the card over and trim off any excess. Now I also want to add a little strip of some glitter cardstock here. So I ran a little line of liquid adhesive and I'm putting down a thin strip of silver glitter cardstock. I treat my specialty cardstocks like glitter or shiny cardstocks like gold. I keep every little piece because even a tiny strip like this can add so much to a card. Now we have that circle from before, the white circle. I'm putting glue right into the opening and gluing the white circle into that. So this white circle, you'll see whether the card is opened or closed. So we can put our sentiment there. For a sentiment, I'm using the new Alta New Sweet Sentiment die set, and I'll tell you I'll be using this a lot because I really love the style. Now there is a die set that has the words hugs, thanks, hello, celebrate, and for you. It has those dies along with the shadow dies to go with it. 
Then there is a hot foil plate set that has the same words that coordinates with those dies. So you can buy them together or separate and use them together or separately. Here is what it looks like if you foil the word and then use the shadow die to cut it out. This is blue foil on white cardstock. I was originally going to use that, but changed my mind and decided to use the dies instead. I cut the word thanks from black cardstock and glued it onto a white shadow die cut. The reason I chose to use the black and white is because it stood out more next to that busy floral pattern, but you could definitely do the foiling if you prefer. Totally up to you and I like that there's options. For the stamp sentiment under my die cut sentiment, I chose to use this six by eight stamp set that was sitting on my desk also waiting to be used. This has a lot of great sentiments and I'll use a few in this video. This does come with a coordinating uh, stencil set which makes coloring it very easy. That's why I wanted to use it and it's sitting out. So let's stamp that sentiment under the word thanks. I have my Misty stamping tool, have my card in there, and I'm just stamp, stamping uh, sending big hugs with black ink towards the bottom of the circle, and then we can glue the thanks right above it. You know me, I've got to add a little bit of sparkle. So I have my Studio Katia Silver Sparkle Crystals. These are clear gems with silver glitter on the inside, so it matches nicely with the silver glitter paper I used. I put uh, these on top of the dots that the stencil created and also added a few more in the white background. So this will just add a little bit more of that silver sparkle. So here is a look at the completed split window design. You can see it stands up on display. There's plenty of room to write a personal message. And I like that you can see that focal point sentiment, whether the card is open or closed. This floral background is the one I did where I traced with the glitter pen. So you can see there's some sparkle there. And also we have that thanks stamped repeated on the border just to add some more interest. And the best part about this design is I have the other half of that floral piece to make a second card. All right, let's go on to another version of this card. This time I'm using a different shape and a different border sentiment. So again, I have a note card that I cut and scored to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm opening that up and putting a score line at two and three quarter inches. Again, you can change that to make the flap either bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter. I chose two and three quarter inches because that's the width of half of one of my stenciled pieces so I could get two cards from it. For the window of this split card design, you can do any shape you want, but I do recommend anything symmetrical. Round works, and these do too, these geometric frames. I'm choosing one that is um, symmetrical, and it cuts a thin frame at the same time, which you'll see in a moment. I thought this would be a fun shape. Later, we'll do a heart and some more circles. So I'm placing this so the top and bottom points of the die line up with that score line. I'll tape it in place, open it up, and run it through our die cut machine. Remember, this die actually cuts a thin frame also, so I'm cutting it from silver glitter cardstock, and I'll use this silver glitter frame, and I also cut it from white cardstock, and I'll pop that piece in the middle. But first, we have to cut that window, or half of that window, into our floral piece. Thankfully, this die, it's easy to figure out the center point, I just line the top point and bottom point of the die with the edge of the floral piece, tape that in place, and run it through our die cut machine. Then I'll be able to glue this on the front of our card. And at this point, I decided I didn't like the blue card with my uh, floral background, so I decided to switch to the green card. I did it in the exact same way, though. I just switched colors. Now, I also wanted to mention that I really have always liked the Altenew glue tape. It's a great uh, tape runner. However, I didn't use it much anymore because it didn't have refills. Now they have refills available and I'm really thankful for that. You can also use tape runner to glue this flap down. Okay, so now I've switched to this greenish color and I have that silver glitter frame that we'll add in a moment. But first I want to stamp repeatedly down the side of this card. I took the sentiment with all my heart from the Altenew dotted pinwheel stamp set that I showed you earlier. And this time I'm putting it at an angle and I'll stamp repeatedly at this angle. Because this sentiment is not as tall, 
I'm only going to move up one grid each time I stamp it. So see, I shifted it up one grid and then I will stamp it again. So each time I just move up to the next line on the grid pad in my stamping tool. This is one of those techniques that's very helpful to have a stamping tool and why I always recommend one to stampers. This time I am again stamping with the Volcano Lake ink. I could do one layer here or just stamp it once. But again, I like to start with a lighter ink and stamp it a couple times, which makes the color a bit darker and I get a better stamp impression every time I multi-stamp. So I'll continue to move this up one grid line at a time until I fill up all the way up to one edge of the card. Then we'll start shifting it down in our stamping tool one grid line at a time to finish along the bottom of the card. All right, so now we have this sentiment stamped repeatedly at an angle, which I think is a really fun element to add to this card. So I have all my pieces ready so we can glue them together. I'm putting a thin line of liquid adhesive right inside of our window and I'll pop in that thin silver die cut frame and then the solid white piece in the center of that. And then our floral piece on the flap. You could use liquid adhesive, whatever adhesive you want. I like to use liquid for things like this because I can wiggle it until it's right in where I want it. Then I just press it down and it'll hold tight. I then flip it over and cut off the excess. I ran a bit of liquid adhesive right along our score line and I'm putting onto that a very thin piece of the silver glitter cardstock. For the sentiment, I got a little creative. The die set has the word thanks and it also has for you. So I die cut thanks and I'm cutting the S off. So I just have thank. Then I just use the word you from the for you die and I put that with the thank and I have thank you. So you can always turn thanks into thank and then add the word you. So I cut that from dark green cardstock and I'm gluing that onto a white shadow die cut and I'll just cut the S off of this also. So no one will ever know you changed it up and got a new use out of it. I liked how the word thank you fit there better than just the word thanks. So I glued that right onto the white piece and here we have our completed card. I really like the split window card design because you see the sentiment whether the card is opened or closed and it's just different than what we normally make. It also stands up nicely when you put it on display. You can see I added a few of those glitter gemstones and also the repeated stamping we did along the border. I think that's a fun and easy way to take a simple sentiment and really up the impact it can make. I also wanted to include an example with a heart window because the heart really works well for the split card design. So I have a basic heart shape here, any size really would work. And I'm placing it so that the points of the heart line up with that score line and ran it through my die cut machine. I then put glue between the two score lines to glue, glue that part of the card closed. Now I have the same heart die and I'm putting it along the edge of our floral piece, making sure the points line up with the edge of that cardstock and run that through our die cut machine. This time I thought it would be fun to have two sentiments stamped repeatedly along the border of the card. I'm using the Altenew Paint a Flower Hibiscus. This has a beautiful outline image, but what I really liked was the style of the sentiments. So I chose You Are Amazing and I'll stamp that first. So I put that into my Misty stamping tool and I am shifting it three grid lines each time. This leaves a little gap in between each stamp sentiment so I can add another one there in a moment. I again am using a fog colored cardstock, like a light gray, and I'm stamping this with that Arctic color, which is a light bluish gray. All right, so after I have stamped that sentiment, I've chose a smaller one from one of the sets I showed you earlier, and I'm putting that between the others, and then I will stamp that. Again, shifting three grid lines each time, and that will get the placement right between what we did before. So now I have two sentiments, alternating here on the border, which adds even more fun to the card design. After doing that stamping, we can glue all of the other pieces to this card, just like we did on the other examples. I again used the thanks dies. I cut the word thanks from blue cardstock and the shadow from white and glued that onto the heart. I also stamped with all my heart underneath it with a blue ink that matches. I have a thin strip of blue cardstock just to give a little definition. 
and more of those silver glitter gems. Here you can also see the two alternating sentiments on the border. I really like those to be very soft and subtle, but you definitely could use a darker ink if you want them to stand out more. I have one more example for you, and this is a landscape or horizontal card. Just wanted to show you that the split window design works for that too. And you do it just like you've done the others. Exact same score measurements. I scored at four and a quarter, and I scored at two and three quarter inches, and I'm folding that flat back. So just like we did before. I have my circle die and I'm lining it up so that score line is right through the center of it or as close as I can get and running that through my die cut machine. Then we will take this and transfer it over to our inked piece and I'll make sure that the score line at the center of that circle, of that yellow circle, lines up with the edge of the cardstock to the best that I can do. Then I will tape that down and run that through our die cut machine and that will give us that semicircle on our uh, inked floral piece. We can put glue on the inside of the card between the two score lines and press this down. And then we can add our stamping to the border. Now this time I really wanted to have a repeated sentiment very close together to really fill in that space. And I thought a diagonal would be fun again. This says, I just adore you. I'll stamp it once and then I shift it one grid line and stamp it again and that will put it super close together. If I want it spaced more, I could go two grid lines. But really following the grid lines is very helpful. I think it's a little too tricky to go in between, but if you want to, you could give that a try. I thought this was cool because uh, the sentiments are really close together so it fills that border quite nicely. And I'll continue to stamp this until the entire border is filled. I have a white circle die cut that's the same circle size that I used for the window. And I'll glue that into the window. And then we can add our floral piece to the flap. Once again, I used that trick of cutting off the S from thanks so I could do the thank you greeting. And I did that from white and gold glitter cardstock added a gold cardstock strip right across the border there and also some gold glitter gemstones. There you can see the repeated I just adore you which I think adds a lot to the card. So this is one of those card designs you can use with whatever stamps, stencils, dies you may have. Great way to kind of feature those fun backgrounds you make. If you're interested in the supplies I used, I link to them below in my YouTube description. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other videos with similar techniques, but do know you can go to my blog to bookmark your favorite cards and videos for future reference. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll be back very soon with another video.